Anyway, about to get started with the um, bicep workout. What's good guys, uh, Joseph Rikers here from josephrikers.com and welcome to today's vlog. Today I'm going to be training biceps with one of my good mates, Lucky. So I'm going to take you through this full workout, show you what exercises we perform, uh, the number of sets, the number of reps, and give you some tips and techniques along the way. Anyway, I'm about to get started with the um, bicep workout. We're doing um, preacher curls with the free weights. Now, we're using a close grip, that way it's going to work more of the bicep long head, which is the outer part of the bicep, which really creates that bicep peak. We're also going to be doing it slow and controlled, so not going too heavy, um, but really focusing on the negative rep, because there is actually more muscle fibers ripped on the negative range of motion of any exercise that you perform. So we're keeping it slow and controlled, um, and really focusing on that time under tension, rather than that weight overload. Anyway, my set. Also not going to go right the way down, because when you go right the way down, even though you're using a full range of motion, the bicep's going to rest. So we're going to stop it about there. As the weight increases, the reps are going to decrease. So, rep range is going to be 20, 15, 12, 10, 8. A typical technique um, when training, any muscle group for that fact, is to train with a training partner or just find someone in the gym to give you a spot. I'm going to give Lucky a spot right now because when you can get a spot, it allows you to get a few force reps out, and those few force reps are what actually great create the muscle growth. Because anytime your body is forced with stress, um, that's when your body needs to be able to adapt to handle that weight next time. Now if I'm spotting Lucky here on this preacher curl, he's able to get a few more force reps out, more than what he could by himself. Now this applies stress overload, and the body's response to that is to adapt. And the only way for the body to adapt is to grow bigger and stronger muscles next time which, as long as his diet's on point, which I'm pretty sure it is, <laughs> then he'll make those um, gains in the gym. All right, let's go. to get the stretch reps out. So normally you would have stopped on maybe like, you know, 10. Because the spotter is there, the spotter's job is to encourage you, do two more, and then two more, two more, and then another one, and then another one. And it's all about overloading that muscle with stress. Second exercise now for biceps. We're doing bicep hammer curls. This is probably one of my favorite exercises. Reason being, because it works the outside part of the bicep which is that part right there. Doing your bicep hammer curls is a great way to really work the outer part of the bicep and that is what creates the bicep peak. We're gonna be doing uh, five sets in total for this as well. Rep range again is gonna be 10 to 20. Starting off on 20 reps, as the weights increase, the reps are going to decrease. So I did my first set with the 30s. Second set, I'm gonna go 35s. Then my way to 40s, 45s, and so on. Anyway, 
my set now. I also like to hold it right at the top of the dumbbell. For some reason, I just get more activation in my biceps going that way. That right there, first set, second set actually. <laughs> second set, biceps get pumped straight away from there. Yep. Feels good. One of the most important things when training um, biceps or any muscle group is muscle mind connection. Now, you really want to focus on activating and working the muscle. Focus on putting that muscle, whatever muscle it is you're training, today we're training biceps. Focus on putting the biceps under as much stress as you can and as much activation. Now, back in the past, you know, years ago, I used to be an ego lifter. I used to come in the gym, and just try and lift as much weight as I can. But what ended up happening is, it wasn't my bicep muscle lifting the weight, my momentum, my swing, my secondary muscles, such as my front deltoids, were actually taking over that lift. So even though I thought I was lifting heavy, the result that was happening to my bicep was actually less. Therefore, I was actually getting the bicep muscle less stronger um, and less muscle fibers being ripped, which leads to less muscle growth. So now, um, my whole mindset's changed. Instead of counting the reps, I make the reps count. So it's a good quote to live by, don't count the reps, make the reps count. That way, you can be sure to get the most out of each and every single one of your sets, and that way, it's going to pay off in the long run. Anyway, my next set. Third exercise now for biceps, we're doing seated dumbbell curls um, with a contraction hold. As you guys know, muscle grows from stress. So to increase the stress on this exercise, what we're actually doing is we're actually holding each rep um, under contraction. So none of the weights are held at the bottom. You're holding it at the contraction point and then doing the next rep. So basically what that's doing is just overloading the muscle with more stress, more activation. And like I've said a million times before, more stress, more activation leads to more muscle growth, uh, muscle fibers rip, which leads to more muscle growth. After we've done the contraction holds, we're then going to burn it out with some double, double partials. So constantly keeping one of the bicep muscles under constant stress. <laughs> Can't really go heavy for this exercise. Damn, it burns it out. I'm going to take this to failure. And you're going to finish off on some double hand partials. <coughs> Let's go. Nice. Squeeze it. Yeah. Good shit. Nothing left. <laughs> it gets to the point where the muscle gets so fatigued, it just doesn't work. Yeah. So that's what we do there. We take it to failure, doing the single arm contractions. Once you reach failure, then you just burn it out. Use a little bit of momentum, but just try to apply as much stress to that muscle there. Yeah. Great way to burn it out. More stress, more growth. Yeah. Right, <laughs> <laughs> My arms are burning out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Contracting. Release. Contracting. So the only time the muscle actually, um, I guess, gets a break is actually when you're lowering the weight down to curl it back up. So constantly, 95% of this exercise the muscle, both muscles are under stress. He's now on to his partials, which is the finisher. Great way to burn it out. Nice, lucky. Shoo! <laughs> Bicep workout is done. Well, I'm done. Lucky still got his last set. We're now going to train triceps. We're going to do the same thing. So it's going to be three different exercises. Um, each one of those exercises is going to be five sets and the rep range is going to be anywhere from 10 to 20. 
always permitting up in weight. So the first thing will be about 20 reps, then we're going to increase the weight, um, then the reps are going to decrease. And we're going to do that three exercises, I mean, yeah, three exercises, five sets each, 10 to 20 reps. Anyway, let's go. First exercise for triceps, we're doing tricep, close grip, flat bar, push downs. Now, um, this is one of my favorite exercises for triceps. Reason being is because you can really focus on that squeeze and contraction of the muscle. The better squeeze and contraction, um, the more activation is gonna be. Like I've said a million and one times before, <laughs> more muscle growth. Now, a tip or technique that I like to do when performing this exercise is I actually like to lean my body slightly forward. What that allows me to do, it allows me to lean over the weight and allows me to get a better contraction uh, through the tricep muscle. Now, you want to focus on keeping your elbows stationary though. Keep your elbows exactly where they are. If your elbows move back and forward, um, secondary muscles such as your lats come to pull it down and your shoulders start to roll over. Therefore, deactivating the triceps, which is not what you want. So really focus on keeping your elbows stationary and lean forward slightly um, for a better contraction. Give it a go next time you try in triceps and see how it feels. Anyway, my set now, so I'll show you how it's done. Instead of standing up straight, I like to lean over, squeeze, keep my elbows stationary. now for triceps we're doing close grip bench press now this is um, one of my favorite exercises to do for the triceps reason being is because you can overload the triceps with a lot of weight and most other tricep exercises you do um, the push downs the rope extensions all that kind of stuff you can't really overload the muscle with much weight so what you're really doing is focusing on squeeze and contraction for those other exercises but this exercise that we're about to do right now the close grip bench press it really allows us to overload the tricep muscle with weight. Weight overload, um, which is going to give us that muscle growth there. Now, the tip when doing your close grip bench press is you want to have your hands close, to your, um, close together and try to keep your elbows as tucked into your side as you can. The more you flare your elbows out, the more chest activation is going to be. Push with the back of your arms. Push with the back of your arms. Five sets. Um, Pyramid up and wait each time. final exercise for triceps. Um, this is a cool one. <laughs> this one is standing skull crushes um, or overhead extensions on the preacher curl machine, which is the bicep machine. Now, it's a little bit of a variation that I like to use. I basically lean against the preacher curl machine and I do my skull crushes or overhead extensions with the EZ bar using a close grip. Great exercise for really working 
the tricep long head, and the tricep long head is where the mass of the tricep comes from. So this exercise is a great mass builder. So there we are on the preacher curl bicep piece of equipment. And we're going to do about five sets once again, rep range 10 to 20, pyramiding up in weight, decreasing down in reps. So the reason why I like to perform this exercise guys is because it um, really allows you to get a good stretch from the tricep long head. Now, the tricep long head is this part of the tricep right there. Um, I'll put an anatomy chart up on the corner of this video. Now the tricep long head is where the mass of the tricep actually comes from. So if you want big triceps, you want a ball size in the tricep long head. Now this exercise, or any exercise where you get a very good stretch to the triceps, is a great exercise for adding um, muscle hypertrophy to the long head. More size or more hypertrophy in the long head, create a bigger um, tricep. So this is a great exercise. So the tip when doing this one is to get a good stretch on every single rep. There's two different grips you can use on this easy bar as well. There's a wide grip and there's a close grip. Um, I use both variations, but today we're going to use the close grip. My advice is always mix it up, change your varieties, change your grips, um, change your width. It all helps in um, overall muscle development. Big stretch. Let the weight pull your elbows back. That felt so good. <laughs> And if you guys do need help um, with a personalized meal plan or workout program, I am an online coach. I can help you. Um, so if you are interested in changing your life, changing your physique, whether it be building muscle or losing body fat, you can join my 12-week transformation program and you'll receive everything that you need to achieve the results that you want to achieve. Meal plans, workout programs, uh, extreme ab workouts, extreme fat burning cardio routines, the best and most effective types of cardio that you can perform to burn the most amount of body fat. Not to mention, you'll get uh, customer support from me and my support team. You'll get access to my private Facebook group. You'll get a free supplement guide and a whole lot more. If you are interested, guys, the link is in the description box down below. Anyway, I've got three more sets to go, so I'm going to go complete that right now. Let's go, bro. Bring it up. Nice. Let's more. go. One more. Let's go. All the way. Nice. Nice. Ooh. There you go. So that right there is applying weight overload, really forcing the muscles, putting them in an uncomfortable position, and that's exactly what we want to do. Anyway, Ooh, two more <laughs> Bicep and tricep workout done. Now I'm going to have a shower, uh, then go get something to eat. How's your arms feeling, bro? Bro, well, fucking dead, man. Straight up. <laughs> Crazy session. Check this shit up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Time for me to shower, get cleaned up. See you guys for my next meal. Alright guys, I am back home from the gym right now, about to have my post-workout meal. Today's post-workout meal is eggs and avocado. Bit of a weird meal, um, but it is one of my favorites right now. It used to be uh, Pro Oats, which was protein powder and oats. I have a video on my YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, just search my name. Um, but my current favorite meal is eggs and avo. Now, the reason, um, now I'm not just one of these YouTubers who, you know, consume this meal and say I'm eating this or will do this exercise and say I'm doing this. Whenever I'm in the gym doing a specific exercise, I say why I'm doing it and whatever meal I'm having, I'm saying why I'm eating this, I'm not just consuming it. That way I find you guys get the most value from my videos. So the question is, why am I having eggs and avo? First off, eggs um, a great source of protein, obviously and great source of healthy fats. Now, I do eat the whole eggs. There is eight whole eggs there and one avocado. 
Now, a lot of people say, oh, too much whole eggs, it'll raise your cholesterol. Actually, that is incorrect because dietary cholesterol does not raise blood cholesterol. If anything, you're going to get higher cholesterol levels consuming a massive amount of sugar in a calorie surplus. Dietary fat is actually very important for brain function and hormone regulation, especially testosterone production. Not to mention um, all of the vitamins and minerals are in the egg yellow, the egg yolk. Um, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D. That's why it is very important to eat that. Now the avocado, um, the reason I'm consuming that is because avocados are a superfood, super high in potassium. Now potassium is an important electrolyte, um, crucial for muscle contraction, muscle function. And when you're training hard in the gym and you're sweating a lot, you need to consume more potassium. You actually need more potassium than sodium in your diet. Now the average Ameri American uh, consumes way more sodium than potassium. Avocados are also a great source of fiber, healthy fat, and magnesium and calcium. So very nutritious, uh, very nutritious meal. No carbs in this meal, but I will have carbs in my later meals today. I also go heavy with the pink Himalayan salt. Um, I actually normally use black truffle salt, but right now I don't have any black truffle salt because I ran out, so I'm using pink Himalayan. But black truffle salt or pink Himalayan salt are the best salts that you want to use. Um, there's actually 84 trace minerals in the pink Himalayan salt, so very good, especially for someone that sweats a lot. You want those electrolytes back in your system. Anyway, time for me to dig into my eggs and avo. Eggs and avo in the avo. one more thing I want to share with you guys uh, I do this after every meal where I am at home it is I go and I have some ginger now the reason I have this ginger is basically it helps with uh, digestion and the better you can digest your food the better you can utilize those nutrients